So much of the ocean is yet to be discovered. In fact, scientists believe there could be more than 2 million species just waiting to be found. Enter the Ocean Census. It's a new initiative to scour the seas in search of new species. They set a goal to find 100,000 new species over the next 10 years. And the more we learn about new marine life, the better we can protect them. I'm talking with Ocean Census CEO, Oliver Steed. Oliver, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I wanna start off with uh, what exactly is the Ocean Census and how did this idea get started? Well, Ocean Census is a mission to try and discover at least 100,000 new species in the ocean in the next 10 years. Uh, so we've come together and put together an alliance of different partners founded by the Nippon Foundation and Necton to bring people from the science sector, from media, from government, from business, uh, all together on this massive global effort. So we're going to be looking for all sorts of animals, large and small, bright and beautiful. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's not just going to be the little critters that we're going to find. We expect to find big animals as well. The longest animal on Earth was a siphonophore, which was found in 2020 by the Schmidt Ocean Institute of Australia. Um, the large, uh, a new whale was also found in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, a Balin's whale in, I think, 2021. So we know that there are amazing animals, both large and small, for us to discover. And we think we're going to find a bit of everything. Uh, and we've already begun with our first expedition, which is up uh, in the Arctic Ocean uh, as we speak. Are you beginning there because you think maybe this is an area or a region where you're going to maybe find the most new species? Uh, well, we are focusing all our expeditions in biodiversity hotspots, and there are some amazing uh, uh, what's called cold seeps. So there's some things coming out of the seabed, which is creating an amazing ecosystem up there, which our, uh, our scientists and our partners have identified. So we think we will find a lot of uh, species up there, but we're also very mindful that the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis is uh, causing huge problems for ocean life. And the ice melt, for example, the warming water means that animals up in the Arctic are starting to move to different locations or they just can't live there and so we're, they're starting to experience um, death. So we need to try and discover these species before they are lost. Other than the Arctic, are there other kind of areas that you're, you're focusing in on as some of the hot spots to look? Yes, I mean, we're looking at um, uh, the tropical and subtropical areas as well, uh, not least because the, the temperatures of the ocean are warming massively at the moment. It's the hottest year for the ocean on record this year. The El Nino, as you're probably aware, is heating the ocean even more. And when we see that uh, occurring, we know that it's going to be very, very difficult for a lot of animals to survive, particularly in the tropical areas, particularly in shallow waters, where we'll see a lot of, um, uh, a lot of corals being lost, um, which will be... Uh, a a huge loss for for society and, and for the ocean as well because these coral reefs are like the rainforest of the ocean They they hold about 25 percent of the diversity of ocean life so with all this heating going on we're going to lose a lot of them there's going to be massive mortality of these corals and also all the animals and other fish which live in amongst these reefs so we know that we need to go there uh, of the utmost importance so we are going to be focusing in those areas those biodiversity hotspots and other areas as well where we expect to see also areas um, of, of of ocean which are under threat. So the discovering of new life is kind of just one of the aims of Ocean Census. You have five core aims. Can you talk about the other four? Yes. So, um, uh, well, one of the things we need to do, obviously, to discover ocean life is to actually go to sea. So we're undertaking a huge network of expeditions, which we'll be doing some of them, um, but our partners will also do others. So, as I say, this is an open network of partners all coming together. So that's people from the philanthropic side, the philanthropic fleet, the government fleets and commercial fleets, all able to contribute. So expeditions is a key area. Storytelling as well is another key area, bringing in, uh, trying to find new ways to innovate the stories of ocean ocean life uh, and the stories of the ocean so people can fall in love with the ocean if they can do that then we've got a, a far greater chance that we hope people will protect it so those are just a couple of the areas there's other ones around data other ones around building capacity more scientists more taxonomists particularly in low and middle income nations where there's a lot of biodiversity but not many scientists so let's talk a little bit about the methods that you're using to make some of these discoveries, some of the technology that Ocean Census has, um, submersibles and AI, and some of the other really interesting things you guys are using. 
Uh, yeah, so we're going to be deploying a whole range of technology, both in the water, so that's with divers as well, and we'll be partnering with PADI, so scientists uh, and open water divers and people who've got PADI certification can also participate. Also robots and autonomous systems in the water to capture species and also to document them in situ, uh, which is really important. We need to see what these incredible animals look like in their natural environment. Um, and then when we come back to land, that's where we can do some really high resolution imaging. Um, so we can take extraordinary pictures to see both what they look like on the outside, but also on the inside of these animals. They're, they're what's called their morphology as well. Um, and then we can use uh, new sequencing technologies so we can look at their DNA, which is the code of life, which will again give us markers to understand whether these are new species. And then on top of that, add some machine learning. And it's these three really critical rev technological revolutions. So that's the imaging, your sequencing and your machine learning all coming together, which enable us to discover ocean life at speed and scale. So I do want to touch on that again. You don't actually have to bring the marine life uh, up to the surface and take them out of the water. You can study them underwater. Why is that so important? Well, you know, from from the days we started discovering ocean life, there's a tradition of, you know, you kill something, you bring it up. Scientists will look at it under the microscope. Uh, but we want to find a new way to do that. And at the moment, um, yeah, sadly, we still need to do a lot of that. But we only take one uh, specialist sample, if you like, and bring that up. It's not as if we're, we're, we're uh, yeah, we're uh, picking up huge quantities of these animals. Um, but the more we can do to actually discover and describe animals in situ where we don't need to kill them, so much the better. So there are new technologies where, for example, you can beam a, uh, like a laser in the water, um, which can give you a CT scan. So you can imagine if you had a CT scan on, on, on land, it could look inside you. So we can do that with, uh, particularly with gel gelatinous um, animals, like your squid, your jellyfish and others, which are otherwise quite tricky to capture. But you can actually f uh, shoot this laser, which doesn't um, yeah, cause any harm to the animals, to be able to start to build a picture of what they look like. We can also take little sample to take a bit of DNA from them in the water uh, and then bring that 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 piece of DNA up to the surface and then do the, the sequencing um, up top as well so we're looking to really advance these technologies so we can um, discover and describe these incredible animals um, when they're in their natural environment so obviously there has to be a, a process to actually declare a new species. What, is, what does that look like? How long does it take to say, hey, we found this, we think it's a new species, and then confirm that? Well, currently, on average, it takes about 13 and a half years to, de to discover and describe a new species. And some species can take uh, a lot longer than others. Some are a bit, bit shorter, depending on if we know a, lo a lot about that, uh, that family group or that phyla uh, on the tree of life. Um, but the, using these different technologies, uh, your imaging, your, um, your uh, sequencing and machine learning, what we're able to do is create a digital life form. So gather all that data in a digital form, which enables us to then very very quickly in a matter of days or hours to then turn around and go, we think that's a new species. Um, the process then of describing it, which is a scientific process with papers and publications, can take a little bit longer, but that initial digital identification of some whether an animal is new or not can happen really quickly now. So uh, there was a massive effort to take a census of marine life from 2000 to 2010. The U.S. census is about every 10 years, so makes sense for sea creatures too. How is Ocean Census going to build on that effort? Well, I mean, in many ways, the, the journey and the discovery of ocean life began four billion years ago where life evolved on Earth. Um, and... Uh, life's evolved in the ocean for three times longer on land. So that's kind of our backstop. In recent times, of course, starting with what's known as the Challenger expeditions of the 1800s, that's when that was the birth of modern science. So since then, we've been slowly discovering species, but we still discover them at the same rate as we did back in uh, the 1800s, sadly, about 2,000 a year. So we're looking, obviously, to discover over 100,000 new species in the next 10 years. So we're using all these technologies to achieve that. The Centers of Marine Life, the last big program of this kind, uh, wasn't just focused focused on the discovery of ocean life. They were looking at abundance, distribution patterns, biogeography, all those different aspects. Um, and they identified about 6,000 new species. Um, but we're now at a different time. We've got new technologies available to us. Um, and of course, we have the, the twin threats of the storms of the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis, which is yeah, putting a great, um, a great weight on, uh, on ocean life. So we need to get out there and discover it as quick as we can before it's lost. 
let's touch on that just a little bit more. So obviously you kind of just touched on two different things that we're facing. Why is this mission so important? Um, well, I mean, ocean life makes all life on Earth possible. And um, and at the moment, we've only discovered about 10% of that. So if we want to understand oxygen production or the carbon cycle or food production for billions of people, we have to understand what lives in our ocean far, far better. Um, and uh, and so that's kind of that's what's underpinning it. And that's why we need to do this now if we want to be able to sustain and benefit life. If you look at the, the storms of the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis, that gives additional urgency to what we're doing. You then add on the technological revolution that enable us to now do this at speed and scale, we've got an opportunity to discover ocean life now um, when it's most needed for us um, and transform our knowledge of life on Earth at a time that we really need it to help inform our governments, our decision makers, you and I, about how we can better protect our, uh, this life, which supports all life on Earth. Okay, so let's talk about the timeline on this. Are researchers going to spend time in one region before moving on to another, or is it a kind of divide and conquer strategy? It's definitely divide and conquer. You know, this is an open network of partners all the way around the world who are all contributing. So there are people already involved in the discovery of ocean life in different places uh, around the world's ocean. So we need to, and we are working with them. So where they have those opportunities to undertake their expeditions and con contribute their discoveries uh, to the global effort, we hope people will do that as well. So it's not just about us doing our missions. Uh, it's about everyone undertaking all these missions together. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to be all over north, south um, and uh, east and west across the global ocean, uh, in particular in these biodiversity hot spots um, in uh, extraordinary parts of the world. Such an important undertaking. So how can we follow your efforts? Well, you can follow us on, on our website, oceansensus.org, or on our social media channels on Insta, on, uh, on Twitter, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, the usual kind of areas. But please do tune in and follow us and, and, uh, and find ways in which you can also join the effort. You know, this is not just about us. This has to be a global effort. If you like to live and you love to enjoy what, how, our, how our world exists at the moment, then we need, all of us need to fall in love with ocean life because it's that life, that wonder, the abundance of this life that makes all life possible. I think we'd all agree that we like to live. <laughs> uh, Oliver, thanks so much for talking to us about the Ocean Census. Again, Oliver Steed with the Ocean Census. Follow Pattern and like and subscribe for more stories like this. Follow the Ocean Census as well. I'm Felicia Combs. Thanks for watching.